Hello Zwifters, thanks for taking the time to watch my short video about the London Loop, which is being used on tonight's What's for Socks traditional British hill climb. The event takes place at 6.45 GMT. If you haven't taken part in one of these events before, then I'll explain that the aim is not to go as fast as you can around the whole course, but to use the beginning as a warm up and then do your strong effort on the KOM, which tonight is Box Hill. Box Hill is 1.9 miles or 3 kilometers long, an average grading of 4.4%. The idea of this video is not only so that I have a recce ride to know how to pace my effort this evening, but also to let everyone know where the KOM starts. Actually, on this course it's fairly clear, as it's the only one. Unlike last week's course, where there were three markings on the road, I didn't start my effort on the first, but I did on the second, and actually I should have gone on the third which was a little frustrating after putting in a, such a hard effort. So let's speed the video up to somewhere close to the start of the KOM, which gave me around 12 minutes as a warm up. Up to this point, it's all fairly flat. So as you start to approach the start of the KOM, it comes up at around 4.2 miles into the course and is marked by a red line that crosses the road, which should be just around the corner. There you go. So it starts off fairly easy and then quite quickly ramps up to around 7% as you get towards this first right hand turn. My aim through this was not to give it a full gas effort tonight, but to probably try and aim for about 250 watt average. So we're approaching the first right hand turn, it's just coming up and as you can see the gradient's gone up to about 6-7% and it soon will when you go round it. It then stays at this fairly consistent 7-8% until you get to about the first half a mile or so. So as you can see I'm riding the Tron bike on this particular video. Probably tonight when I actually do the event I'll switch to a lightweight bike and a lightweight mileage time wheels to hopefully maybe gain a couple of extra seconds. One thing to note is that when the event's on there are no power-ups and there are also no drafting. As you start to approach this first left hand bend of the zigzag, the gradient starts to drop off a little bit between 4 and 5 percent.
ramps up here to seven and just when you go around the corner it drops off to much something much lower. So you get a little bit of respite at one two percent before it then picks up to seven or eight percent again and then settles into about five percent for quite a long time. This 5% goes right through this section up to the next part of the hairpin and then fairly much all the way to the top. I always like to know roughly how long the time the climb is going to take me before I start to give me a rough idea of my pacing and from that I can work out how many watts I think I can sustain over that period of time looking at my power curve. So my aim to do 250 watt average up here didn't really happen. I think you probably see other people on the climb and it just makes you push a little bit harder than you should do. The rabbit effect, I guess. So we're starting to get towards the top of the climb now. And the gradient starts to ease off. We've dropped down to 2% here. And actually as you go over the top, before you get to the banner, it actually does ease down to a negative figure. So you get a little bit of downhill. at that point you change up the gears and you keep pushing towards the line so here we are back to the flat there's a little bit of downhill coming here not that it really feels very much like it and we're counting the feet down to the banner So the estimation was pretty close towards the end there. 
8 minutes and 8 seconds with an average wattage of about 270 watts. So once you've gone through the banner, it's time to have a cool down and enjoy the rest of the route, which you'll need to do to make sure that you complete and get the time for your KOM to register. There is actually a little bit of up after this section, so don't think it's all going to be downhill from here. But once you go over this next lump, it is downhill. Even though it starts to go downhill, I like to keep a little bit of power in the pedals just to ease my legs back off really. So you're starting to head back into London here, through the underground, there's one more steep section to come, then it's over Tower Bridge. Cadence is the key at this point, get up there with Cadence. So Tower Bridge is just around the corner, then there's not far to go. And if like me you've not done this route before, You'll collect the root badge as you finish. So the final order of the KOM times will show up on Zwift Power a short while after this event is finished. I hope you found this video useful and look forward to seeing you on the climb. Thanks for watching.